I'm tracking two developing winter storms taking aim at central and eastern Kentucky. The latest call for snowfall on storm one is next. With another round of snowfall on the way, coming up we'll show you how the Boyle County Public Works Department is preparing. And coming up, the latest now on the water crisis in Flint, Michigan. We'll hear from the governor of the state. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Good afternoon, Sam Dick and Amber Philpott reporting. It's another bitterly cold day out there across the area. And soon, on top of that, we will have snow as well. Our WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day remains in effect as we track the snow that's heading our way. We begin first with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Chris? Yes, the first of two winter storms that we're tracking over the next three days. This first storm is overall moderate in nature. It's nothing that is going to shut down the state or anything like that, but we are talking about widespread accumulations coming from this area of low pressure that is already producing bands of snow around the St. Louis area. And when you start to see the little showery nature on this, the curly cue on the top of that low, that's when you know you've got a decent little area of low pressure that has some lift with it, and that'll produce heavy bands of snow across western Kentucky late tonight and into early tomorrow. Now, up close and personal across central and eastern Kentucky, the atmosphere this morning was kind of giving a signal that it was in supercharged mode and it just wants to snow. Why? Because it snowed a little this morning. With temperatures in the single digits, Arctic cold, dry air in place, and we still had a very weak disturbance produce a little coating of snow for some. That's likely a signal of where we're going over the next few days. Winter weather advisory out for all of central and eastern Kentucky. Look to the southwest around Bowling Green into the Lake Cumberland area, Adair County, Russell County. That's a winter storm warning. That is in effect. This is the area last night we were highlighting for a three to six inch snowfall, and that is still in the cards. Local one, two, three, and four inch amounts for the rest of central and eastern Kentucky. That is through the day tomorrow with a storm system that is number one on our list. Number two, though, may be the bigger of the two. We'll highlight that when I get back in just a few minutes with a new hour by hour forecast, guys, with a computer model that we look at every day here that went absolutely berserk with the snows. We'll show you that in a few. All right, Chris, thank you. And as you might imagine, across the bluegrass communities have now turned their focus to the impending snow. Road crews are braving the cold to prepare for what might come, as Chris has been telling us. Mike Linden talked to the Boyle County Road Department about what they're doing to prepare. It's our top story at 4.30. Drivers from the Boyle County Public Works Department are getting ready for what looks to be yet another round of snowfall for the bluegrass state. Oil County Public Works officials say they've been preparing for snow for months. A crew of 10 drivers will clear nearly 220 lane miles countywide this season. The salt barn is filled with more than 400 tons of salt, with an extra 50 tons delivered today. Boyle County engineer Dwayne Campbell says there's a lot to do to get ready for the season. We have to check lights and various lights and check wiring, and there's always wiring that has to be replaced. And and then and lots of repairs to the truck. So there's a lot of preparation that goes into going out for just that first snow event. Campbell says while driving out on the roads in Boyle County during the snow, if you happen to drive up to a plow truck, to give yourself plenty of space for not only your own safety, but for the safety of the driver as well. In Boyle County, Mike Linden, WKYT. The Boyle County Public Works Department drivers say depending on the severity of the weather, their shifts can go as long as 24 hours. And with the threat of this latest winter storm, some people have been heading to the stores to stock up on supplies. Hardware stores say a few people have been in today to buy shovels, salt, and de-icer in preparation for the snow. And we talked to the folks at Chevy Chase Hardware. They say while they have not been or seen a big rush yet, they expect to. And you'll hear from the owner of that store who suggests stocking up before supplies run out coming up on WKYT News at 5.30. And we want you to stay on top of winter weather and traffic with the WKYT Weather Plus Traffic app. You can download it for free in the app or Google Play stores. Michigan Governor Rick Snyder delivers his State of the State speech today amid growing anger over the state's response to Flint's water contamination crisis. Back in 2014, Flint's water supply was tainted with lead after a state-appointed emergency manager switched the city's water source from Detroit to the Flint River to save money. Adriana Diaz has the story from Flint. Yes, 
Dozens of people demonstrated outside Michigan Governor Rick Snyder's home Monday. Many say his slow response to Flint's contaminated water is criminal. He should have switched it back over to Detroit water as soon as he knew of the contamination. Volunteers and state troopers spent the Martin Luther King holiday in Flint handing out water bottles and filters along a street named for the civil rights icon. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You need help with that? No, I got you. Thousands of others, like Patricia Marshall, are making daily trips to distribution centers to pick up water. Every day we still have to go out and get water. We have to do that, and we're low income. You know what I'm saying? How do we survive? In an article published Monday, the National Journal asked Snyder if comparing his handling of the Flint water crisis to President Bush's management of Katrina is unfair. He replied, no, it's a disaster. The governor says as soon as he found out that the lead was coming from the water, he told people to stop drinking it. No, that's bull. Elena Richardson says Flint needs more than emergency declarations and bottled water. What happens after the water and filter is gone? We're still going to have the lead, we're still going to have the pipes, we're still going to have the poison, we're still going to have the disease. Governor Snyder is expected to lay out a more detailed plan during his address tonight. Hundreds are expected to protest there at the State House. Adriana Diaz, CBS News, Flint, Michigan. And Snyder declared a state of emergency in Flint earlier this month. On Saturday, the president signed an emergency declaration but denied Snyder's request for a disaster declaration based on the legal requirement that such relief is intended for natural events, fires, floods, or explosions. Restaurant chain Max and Irma's is closing 13 stores, but it looks like all remaining Kentucky locations will be spared. The company is trying to streamline operations and deals with underperforming outlets. The owner, Nashville based American Blue Ribbon Holdings, says senior managers went to the restaurants in Michigan, Ohio, and Indiana yesterday to deliver that news. The chain's website lists 51 locations in 10 states. Legendary singer James Taylor is coming to Lexington. Taylor and his all star band will play at Rupp Arena on April 24th. The Lexington Center announced the concert this morning. Taylor has sold more than 100 million albums during his 40 year career. He's won five Grammy Awards and is a member of both the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Tickets go on sale Friday, January 29th at 10 a.m. Also, rock band Pearl Jam also announced they're bringing their show to Lexington in April as well. The band will perform Form at Rupp Arena on April 26th. Then tickets also go on sale January 29th, this time at noon. You can buy them on LiveNation.com or Ticketmaster.com. The Kentucky Conservatory Theater is putting on a special performance this weekend at the Grand Reserve. My Fair Lady. Our Deanne Stevens is out and about at the Barrel House of Preview. Hi, Deanne. Caleb, preparing for this weekend show, My Fair Lady, happening here at the Grand Reserve. I understand there's some magnificent music, some great actors, actresses taking the stage. Wesley Nelson is with us with the Kentucky Conservatory Theater. This is your winter fest. Tell yes. us about it. This is our sister season to Summer Fest, which most people know, out of Moon Dance Amphitheater. So it's our second year here at the Grand Reserve. It's a wonderful venue. So it's just like Summer Fest, but it's cold. So <laughs> we're inside. You can still eat a fabulous dinner, have your cocktail. Tells and sit back in an unconventional space and enjoy fabulous theater. In a warm place, a too. A warm place, very warm. <laughs> that will be key this weekend. Okay, so, uh, set the scene here, what we're about to see. So we have three of our actresses getting ready to do a small clip from Loverly, which is another famous song from My Fair Lady. Okay, take it away, Caleb. It's a lovely show taking place this weekend here at the Grand Reserve. Get your tickets now at mykct.org. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about. Back to you guys. Deanne, thank you. The president of the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts, and Sciences is promising changes and quickly. But as Don Champion tells us, it may not be enough to silence calls for people to boycott the Academy Awards over its all-white acting nominees. 
The president of the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences is promising more diversity. We're all disappointed. I mean, last Thursday was a little bit of a shock. In a statement Monday, Cheryl Boone Isaacs wrote of this year's all-white acting nominees, I am both heartbroken and frustrated about the lack of inclusion. Her response comes amid calls for a boycott of this year's Academy Awards. Actress Jada Pinkett Smith says she will sit out the ceremony. Begging for acknowledgement or even asking diminishes dignity. Film director Spike Lee also plans to sit out. Monday in an Instagram post, he wrote, As I see it, the Academy Awards is not where the real battle is. It's in the executive office of the Hollywood studios and TV and cable networks. Oscar nominees are chosen by a 6,200 member voting body, 93% of whom are white, 74% male. Director Alejandro Inarritu spoke about the controversy in Paris last night. His film, The Revenue, is nominated for Best Picture. When we can't see ourselves in the cinema, there's something going wrong. So I think a lot of things has to be improved. The Academy says it's now taking drastic steps to alter the makeup of its membership. Don Champion, CBS News. He co-founded the group The Eagles and was part of one of history's most successful songwriting teams. Glenn Fry died yesterday in New York following complications from rheumatoid arthritis and pneumonia. Fry teamed up with Don Henley to form the mega popular band known for hits like Hotel California, The Best of My Love, Desperado, and One of These Nights. The Eagles performed last year at Rupp Arena. That was the other day. Uh, this weekend I was at the Chevy Chase Hardware and they had snow shovels lined up all the way down the back. Those will be gone soon. You know, I mean, it's going to happen. I just texted my husband. We recently moved, and I said, do we have a good shovel? Did it come with us? So right. we're checking, as a lot of people are doing that, Chris Bailey, right now with what's coming not once this week, but twice this week. You're right. We're tracking two winter storms. By the way, I, I'll, I'll loan you a shovel for a small fee. Huh? Huh? <laughs> I thought you would do it. I thought you would <laughs> I'll make shovel. them over shovel for an even bigger fee. Uh, we are looking at a winter weather advisory that is out for all of central and eastern Kentucky for late tonight into the day tomorrow. This is a moderate snowfall. That is on the way. Winter storm warning, though, is out for the Bowling Green area toward Lake Cumberland that extends into western Kentucky. This is the area that can pick up four, five, or six inches of snow. Most of central and eastern Kentucky were generally going to be talking about a one to four inch snowfall. Nothing we can't handle, but with the frozen ground, uh, we're going to see some travel issues starting very early tomorrow morning, then continuing as we go through the rest of the day. Then we'll focus on the next storm system that takes aim at the region by Thursday night into. Friday. That'll likely be a bigger storm that we have to deal with. Right now, let's deal with traffic and see what's going on with Officer Don. Well, overall, we do have a couple of collisions that are impacting us right now. Uh, there is a crash at Lane Allen and Garden Springs, and then right up the road at Lane Allen, Lane Allen and Williamsburg, police are also working uh, what appears to be a non-injury crash. Just got word of one on Heronsburg Road. Uh, this, this collision is blocking Heronsburg and Wellington just past the crossover. They're diverting traffic onto Wellington as a result of that wreck. Uh, drive times impacted on Harrodsburg Road. Nicholasville Road, not too crazy, headed toward Digestman County. Uh, Richmond Road looks good. Athens, Boonsville, I-75, on into Madison County. Normal stuff there across the Clays Ferry Bridge. Now back to the studio. Officer Don, thank you. The planets align, a snow creature, and a special anniversary. It's the video that will have you talking. Take a look at this. Starting tomorrow, sky watchers will get a special treat. They'll be able to see five planets at the same time, Mercury, Venus, Saturn, Mars, and Jupiter. All will be visible for about 45 minutes just before sunrise. Experts say it's the first time in more than 10 years that all five of them have appeared together in the pre-dawn sky. The show will last through February 20th. If you need help knowing where to look, you can check out the U.S. Naval Observatory's webpage. They have an app that can help out. Well, you know, we've been talking about a lot of snow, but hopefully not enough to make a giant octopus with. These three brothers up in Minnesota have been creating amazing snow sculptures since 2012. Well, this year they've made a huge octopus right in their front yard. It took them about 500 hours to finish. They say that they warm up, in, they go in the garage, they get warm, they come back out, and they build that. There you see it. The brothers are using their frozen artwork to raise money for charity. Good for them. Almost like a work of art. Today is a very special day for an Oklahoma couple. Meet Lois and Bill Larkin. They're celebrating their 70th 
wedding anniversary. They were high school sweethearts before they got married. And they ate lunch at Tulsa's Mayo Hotel yesterday because that's where they spent their wedding night seven decades ago. We've had a lot of good memories. I've never won an argument in 70 years. Because he was always wrong. <laughs> so listen up, young couples. Bill says he's learned over the years if you get into an argument and you know you're right, don't say anything. But if you're wrong, you better apologize. Congratulations to them. And after 20 years of marriage, he's exactly right. If you're right, just take a step back. If you're wrong, you better say I'm sorry. My dad always told my husband, just say yes, ma'am, and move on. <laughs> there you go. Great. They look great, though, by the they way. They do. For they really do. That long. All right, stick with us. We've got a lot more coming your way right now on this winter storm headed our way.